Hello, everyone. It is uh, February 22nd, 2023. This is the Kubernetes Data Protection Working Group meeting. Uh, I think today the main topic is uh, we're going to continue discussion on CBT. Then I can give a quick update on the volume group snapshot cap. All right, so uh, Yvonne or Prasad, who want to start? I can make you both co-host. Yeah, Um. so trying to, yeah, so today would mainly be Prasad. Um, so I wonder, hang on a sec. Uh -huh. Hey, Carl. I wonder. Um, hey. Well, what what do you think, Prasad? Shall we go over it today, or shall we? Um, because I'm, uh, at least I'm hoping like people like um Ben mm -hmm. and Xiang Chen will be around for this yeah. uh, to, to further this discussion. Yeah, this um, is a very small audience. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely. Uh, <laughs> instead of it's already been discussed with Evan and Carl. <laughs> it's the same thing that you discussed last time. Did you uh, last time? Did you uh, share anything new? Was this? Uh, I see this slide deck. Is the new? Or is this still old? This is the um, uh, is new slash oldish. <laughs> it was just like a follow a bit follow up from like the last conversation with Ben, like Ben Ben the. Um, show up ben also not either. here. Yeah, Ben normally yeah. was Ben here last time. Oh you no, know, have fun. Was, uh, it's a fun. Oh, no, started to join. Fun. Yeah. Hey. So I think like um, Prasad has a different diagram that he wants. To oh no! Oh now now this one. Yeah. This we talked we talked we, we went over this um, last meeting, but we didn't get a chance to record it because Shang Chen didn't have the um, oh post. But do you uh, have any uh, uh slides or some? You say you have a different diagram. Where is that diagram? Is this some? We can just take a quick look and see how that looks like. Mm, yeah, I, uh, I'll, I'll share the link. Yeah, Prasad, go ahead and share. Okay, I will, I was, let me stop sharing so this way you could share. Hi, Fan, how are you doing? Glad to have you back to this call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I joined back as a as an individual. <laughs> oh, individual. <laughs> uh, 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 unpaid, right? <laughs> unpaid, yes. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, so yeah, um, yeah, Prasad, we can walk the group through. Um, uh, but just knowing that we probably have to redo this again in the next meeting. But sure, sure. at least like we can loop up Shing in to get her feedback and input. Um, cool, cool. Yeah. Um, all right, so to um, give the context, so this is the kind of very high level thing uh, we, are, we are trying to achieve uh, with CBT data path. Uh, so backup software would basically call a CBT service endpoint and uh, we will get the change block data. And for authentication, uh, so MTLS is obviously is the is one way, but that adds dependency and extra over, overhead of managing certificates. Uh, it, 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 it would also add dependency over, you know, third party tools if we want to achieve the um, MTLS using service mesh or third manager, for example. Uh, so we uh, discussed and thought of uh, alternative to this, uh, how we can, you know, use Kubernetes APIs to uh, to have the authentication and uh, that way we don't have to go into managing all these certificate uh, certificates and uh, we don't have to rely on uh, the tools like service meshes or uh, cert, cert managers as well. So uh, I would divide the whole workflow into two parts. Uh, one is authentication and then, then the actual, uh, how the data flow uh, happens. So for authentication, um, yeah. So first, talk about I'll talk about the components we we uh, will be discussing. Uh, so CBT client is basically uh, the client who would be requesting the change block data. Uh, so backup software could be one uh, CBT client. Can you imagine? Uh, Kubernetes API server and uh, the CBT service pod. The CBT service pod will basically have uh, basically serve two endpoints. 
uh, one is the Ag API service endpoint and the uh, CBT CBT service oh, endpoint. I, hold, hold on for a minute. Oh, uh, so are we going back to aggregate API server now? I thought we are <laughs> not doing that. Uh, no, no, no. The server no. is one thing, not Ag API objects. But what is this aggregated? Uh, well, let, let them go through. It's, the point is this: this first step is only to to initiate the transaction and uh -huh. set up a session, mm -hmm. and then you are free of the Cube API server for the rest of the data transfer. Okay. Right. right. So aggregated may not be the right term here. Uh, we can say resource or uh, handler or something like that. Um. Yeah. So uh, basically. Um, so once client will will so for authentication you can uh, kind of relate this workload with Ag API server. Um, so client would basically uh, using Go client or any client would mm -hmm. call the uh, volume snapshot delta uh, endpoint. Then so since this request goes through API server, um, we can we will be sure that this happens uh, with PLS authentication encryption in place, right? So all these calls will be uh, secured. Um, so as this CBT service or starts, it will uh, do the server side authentication authorization using the service token it has. Uh, it will uh, make sure it has uh, you know permission to access volume snapshots and other required resources. Uh, so once the client uh, makes a request, the request will go through API server and um, through API API service uh, resource will will so this is similar to how Ag API service Ag API service uh, request flow uh, happens right so the request will go through the CBT pod the CBT pod will authenticate client and it will also do uh, authorization using the service account token it provides. Okay, uh, so we'll check uh, if it has permissions again to uh, volume snapshot resources, and if it is ha it has permission to call uh, non-resource URLs like the CBT endpoint. Uh, it, it it serves. So next step is the service creates a token, and in the response, it it returns URL um, to get the change log data along with the token. Okay, so this object will not persist anywhere. It's similar to how we had designed the this change block API, right? So uh, th there will be unique token uh, per session, and once the client gets the token and URL, it will make the gRPC call uh, with with that client on the on the endpoint to get the change block data. So this authentication flow. Uh, will be secured as it's going through the Kube API server and using the um, Kubernetes CA. So, it, so it will be secured and TLS communication. Uh, the next step, once it gets the token, um, when when it when it calls the gRPC endpoint, um, we so so with the token we can assume that. The trust is already there, so we don't have to do again the server side validation, uh, server validation at client side. Uh, so that removes dependency on you know uh, having the certi certificates at client. Client doesn't have to you know uh, provide its certificates, so we don't have we don't we won't fall into that. So we'll just using the token it will call the gRPC endpoint and uh, get the change log data from the CBT service. So this way uh, we are um, kind of splitting this flow into two parts. First part is to, um, to um, do server and client side validation authentication. Uh, and then once the trust is there, we'll directly call the gRPC endpoint, a uh, CBT service gRPC endpoint to get the actual data. Does uh, that make sense? Uh, can you talk about the deployment model? How do you deploy? Let's see, the you have a your CBT pod 
so what will be deployed together with your with the CSI driver? So this uh, CPT yeah, yeah. So, pod, mm -hmm. the side, is it like a sidecar, deploy like a sidecar? Yeah, yeah. It, it will be a sidecar to um, the, the CSI plugin container. Okay, so it deploys. So if for a CSI driver that want to support this, then they basically need to deploy together with this yeah, so, CPT. So I pasted, I pasted the link to the current CSI deployment uh, picture, right? Okay, so, yeah. Uh, it would look pretty similar to the stateful set deployment pod, right? Mm -hmm. You would have you would have a sidecar with this service, right? Uh, uh, sitting. Can in you it. actually uh, actually let, yeah? Let's take a look at this one. Yeah. Okay. So oh. yeah, we can assume uh, CBT service uh, deployed on the same pod as a the sidecar to CSI plugin so that it can call the. Um, CSI plugin. Okay. So basically, your CSI yeah. plugin will also deploy with all the other sidecars, right? The external yeah, provisioner, yeah. external snapshot is all here in this big pod, right? Sample CSI uh, well, pod. It doesn't have to be the same pod, but it you know it's up to the implementer, right? But, but then you will have to deploy several instances of the CSI okay. plugin, so there's right? No, there's no have to. It's a choice of the implementer. But yeah, so the thing normally, is... Like, I think uh, normally CSI driver choose to do that, right? Otherwise you... True, true. I mean, because otherwise you'll get request because because the, otherwise you get the cost and how do you know right. you don't take right. it? I mean, but, yeah, but, but, but what I mean by that chain is that, you know, if the CSI implementer wants to do any other weird form of HA or other things up to them, right? We don't really care. No, we, we need to give you recommendations. I would just, that's why I'm asking oh, the oh, question. I was absolutely, actually thinking yeah. about a VCS CSI driver, how we would do it, right? So yes. VCS CSI so driver basically- a sidecar. We would supply a sidecar which would have the listener. I would do the the auth the what is it? You would call it the Ag API server, Prasad. Yeah, we'll have this piece yeah. here, and it will make a call through the a Unix socket to the CSI implementer of this thing, which will actually generate the URL and token because that's obviously not in the not in the CSI. It's, uh, it's not in the general spec, right? And that will be returned back to that Unix to that Unix socket back to the sidecar, which will return it back to the client. And then at that point onwards, the client will make a call to that URL with the to and use the gRPC API to pass the token through or whatever the, the protocol might be at that point. And you know that's talking straight to another green box in this uh, in the cluster. Uh, okay, so can you uh... so, call so in this is Sequence diagram, I'm not seeing. Can you add a, a CSI driver in this diagram as well? Because this one does not have the CSI driver. That swim lane, that swim lane, CPT container is a, is a sidecar yeah. in the, in the. Uh, yeah, but there is a call, right? If you call the. Yeah, if you it's in the, the stateful you can, whatever. You, you basically, you will add another you can one. Yeah, yeah. You can refer to yeah. these. Can you, it'll be good if you can add that one. Yep. I, I think well. we should we should start with that uh, with the deployment diagram. It would be easier to picture. Right. You could probably have both, or you could have okay, a okay. Yeah. deployment diagram and also have a sequence diagram. Since the this other one is it's like a sequence diagram, but you probably I don't know if you were trying to combine them, but yeah, maybe have one like this and then the other mm -hmm. one will be the sequence diagram that shows that the driver there as well. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can we can work on that percent. Yeah. Okay, so how did how did you say like um token is and session is generated by the CSI plugin or is it generated by, by the CBT service? Uh, probably by the by the CBT sir by the CBT service. I mean the the sidecar exists to listen and communicate with the CSI driver in a standard fashion. Correct. Yep. So uh, all the implementation details are in the CSI driver. So it makes sense that the CSI driver returns bo both the URL and the token because essentially when that token is conveyed to the through the URL into in the session calls, it has to be decoded by the by that re receiving entity, right? So the sidecar has got nothing to do with the format of the token. It's opaque, but it has it's to like convey. That token has to convey everything which is happening over here, right? So uh, I guess like um, I just um okay um hmm. yeah yeah I think I get that part um I just don't 
to, to confirm, I don't think like um so the CSI plugin is like the, the plugin the, the, the container that's maintained by the provider, right? Correct. So I just want to make sure that not every CSI plugin have to implement their own token in general. No, no, no. In, in fact, it's, it's, see, the thing is, the, the, the way the CSI deployment model is that picture, right? That that little green container, right? It talks via Unix sockets to all these sidecars, right? So each sidecar is talking to it. So there's a protocol there. And uh, all the logic, the business logic of, of the domain knowledge of that environment is in that green uh, picture, right? That the CSI driver container. So there is nothing we can do in our spec which defines how the snapshot data is, is constructed. It is up to the implementer, right? So I'm talking about the authentication part, not the CBT. Oh, snapshot. the authentication part has to be defined by the standard. So, so yeah, again, just talking so the about- The sidecar is doing that work. So. It, if you bring up the picture of the deployment, you can see where these two, where the where the where the two pieces, uh, you know, are handled. So in this case, there are two. Yeah, right. So there's the, the green box that do the authentication authorization. There's the or the yellow box. No, no, no. The, no. Uh, so, so, but Prasad, can you bring up the figure? Pardon? No, no. The 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 CSI one, the the component diagram. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So over here, there's another sidecar in that box called with external attach and external provisioner. There is another sidecar called say CBT, whatever, CBT service, all right? So yeah, that part we, yeah, okay. So I think so that, that part, part is going to do the authentication and authorization of the call. Right, if that, so, if so. that succeeds, if that succeeds, that one is then going to use the, Uni the Unix domain socket to talk to the green box to say, this the here here are the parameters. Return me a URL and a token and a token. Correct. Sorry, so, return me a URL and a token. So the right. URL and the token come from the green box. Comes from the green box, and then so the, the, hang on a sec. Um, so you can flip back to the other diagram and see that. So, sorry, hang on a sec. Stay on this diagram. Um. So, if I'm a like a storage provider, I have to implement my own token generation mechanism inside the green box. Correct, correct. And another provider have to implement their own token generation mechanism inside their, their green box. That's right. So I mean, because we have to, we have to define gonna... what does the token convey, right? So, and that depends on the, on the protocol we're going to define for the gRPC part. See, so uh, Prasad, maybe you can expound on that a little bit more next time, because essentially when we look at the API, right, we have to convey to the API what we are the context in which it's operating correct so so that token has to represent that context now how it's done is totally up to the storage vendor yeah i think if you can actually that sequence diagram you can if you draw out all the uh all the components so the what is missing is the CSA plugin is not there right so if you have that then you can show clearly who is creating those because right yes, now it's going I, I back. Agree. I'm getting confused by looking at yes, this. I agree. One more, one more swim lane. Yeah, one more swim lane to who's constructing this thing. Yeah. So essentially, right. so essentially, essentially for the um, provider to provide a CBT service, they also have to implement uh, an additional token management. Um, well, that's also, right. So, so the piece, whatever, whatever is actually going to do the business logic, right, to actually generate the the diff, or, or to generate the change blocks, it doesn't come totally for free, right? They have to do work. So that work includes getting a URL, generating a gRPC endpoint. Maybe they spawn another process. They we don't care. They can do whatever they want, right? And they have and they have to give us some sort of token which is going to incorporate and represent the fact that you've gone through this authentication and authorization phase. Because once you go into the yellow box below, right, in this figure, you are now talking with, uh, you're now talking encrypted, yes, but not with mutual authentication necessarily. It's that token, that token is delegating the authentication and authorization, right, through a secure channel, and now can be used in this yellow box with, with lower, with lower, 
level of without mutual authentication. Put it that way. Yeah. So. Um, so essentially, inside your CBT uh, um, RPC spec, there is the, an RPC for authentication, specifically to get some sort of CBT token. There's also a separate uh, set of um, RPC calls to get the actual CBT metadata. Right, right. And there, there are two and different then... protocols, Ivan. There would be, the first call is through the Q Kubernetes API server. The rest of the calls now move into the da a data API, right? A gRPC based data API. So every time you make a gRPC call, you have to like pass the token into the provider framework or whatever and say, hey, can I still trust yeah. the token? Yeah, it's the, essentially you have a session, right? You you said, I want to get the change blocks for this volume between this, vo this volume snapshot and this volume snapshot. So it returns, so it authenticates your request validates it, and then returns you a session token and a URL to contact. Then you use that session data to talk, make make all your calls, and you're done. So as a CSI driver maintainer, uh, which um, I guess for the most part, I'm not. <laughs> and, I, and it doesn't really affect me as much, to be honest. Uh, so essentially, if I were to pick up this, I want to expose the CPT service. I want to implement the CPT service. There is uh, the Kubernetes it token. There is the CBD token, which I may I may or may not have in my backend to support. And then there is like um, the CBT RPC call. Mm -hmm. um, um, yeah, like I said, for the most part, like um, it doesn't affect me. Like um, yeah. I'll be interested to see like um, how like, yeah, I think we should, we should driver, yeah, in terms of deliverables or in terms of examples, right? We should we should implement something which which has this uh, a CSI driver component which, which does this right and CSI, maybe I've... client libraries client library so example client library built against the well the gRPC spec right which can demonstrate how to use it. Yeah, that will be yeah. easier. Um... Mm -hmm. It would be good to also get feedback from the security team side, just to see. Yes, it this absolutely. Model is acceptable. This that. part, and, yeah, it I'm absolutely. Sure. Feedback. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it, in addition to that, the CSI driver also has its own like mechanism to authenticate with its backend, right? So, which is like you know, um, which you probably again, right now already do anyway, right? So, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, that's, yeah. So... that's in the green box. That's in the deployment area. Not so, not this green box, but in the yeah. in the CSI driver deployment area, right? Right. Which again, that is nothing to do with CBT, right? It's just like a the CSI driver. So I'm just like I'm thinking from a CSI driver maintainer perspective. It's like. That's right. You know, it has to authenticate with the backend, which it already does. Yes. And then it has to have a special way to authenticate with CBT endpoint, or like at least like issue a generic to a token of some sort. Um, and then you have to deal with Kubernetes to token review. Um, I guess all this I can if I press for start said all this is just to avoid like um TSL supply inside um authentication. Yeah, we absolutely do not want to redo what Kubernetes does for for us today. Correct. We don't want to take on any management of, of network security because that's that's not our forte. Our forte is the domain of, over here. Kubernetes does all this for us. So we have to piggyback as much as we can on the functionality that Kubernetes gives us. Right. And 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 I agree with um, you know, that 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 principle. So, but this there is this like um, extra like um session and token. So, ah, okay. So this this is this is actually we talked about this with Ben I think two meetings ago or three meetings ago. Essentially, you know, this is a data API, correct? And uh, we are we've all agreed right now based on feedback that we don't want this to go through the Kubernetes API service. So that means direct communication with something. Uh, Car, hold on yes. a minute. I so I think there are two paths, right? There is a part of it is still like a control path. You're talking yes. about what are the blocks. And then the second part is the real data, right? No, uh, yeah. So what we're talking about is still just the control part, right? Not really yes. the 
Yes, so Maybe, this is the uh, control yeah. part what Prasad started showing you in the in the uh -huh. swim lane figure, right? In the swim lane figure, it's all about it's all about the control part. Mm -hmm. You're going to the Cube API server. You're you're making an a, a, a post. You're posting a request right through Cube API server, which is because of an Ag API service type, right? Registered there, it goes mm -hmm. all the way without creating an etcd object. It goes all the way to the service. The service does all the authentication and authorization required, but doesn't create an object in etcd. Instead, it returns back. Here, here are the endpoints to connect to now use your gRPC protocol to get the changed blocks. Mm -hmm. That's all control. Can we, I, think, um, I don't know, sorry, and I chatted with about this earlier too. Why can't we just use the, um, the service account token? Why do we need to, two tokens? Okay, so let's, let's not mistake the word token. Token is a general, it just means something opaque. You can call this a session token if you want to make it clear. But the point the point is the session token is something which was constructed as part of authenticating and authorizing. And it it basically <clears throat> carries your right to make a call through the other API. Isn't that what token review and subject access review API is? Doing? It's basically like credential. Like yeah. so it could be like basic credential or something. Yeah, because in the first in the first box there on the right, you already asked Kubernetes API server. Can I? It's it's so it's more than, it's more than just look. It's more than understand the domain of the credential. Okay, the the domain of the Kubernetes credential coming in was all about security and identifying who the client was. It's that type of a token, right? It's a security related token. This token, right, is something constructed by the CSI driver to understand that. It's this volume, it's these snapshots, it's this user, it's you know all the underlying stuff. And it goes with the URL, right? Because that's also where the CSI driver decides what endpoint to expose. So this, this is data, session data, which is not in the, in the Kubernetes domain. It's session data in the CSI driver domain. So what you format what? will be this session token? So it could be a secret, or it could be something else. It could be anything. The, but it could even be, if it's a secret. Uh, 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 secret question. Chain, My question yes. is: uh, uh, Is this? Uh, is it up to the CSI driver to decide the format of this token? Yes. What do you That's mean? That's exactly why we need another swim lane to show where it comes from. Then you maybe could to uh, call this something else. Otherwise, it could yes. be confusing. Yes. Sure. Yeah. For, sure, one, for like... one thing, so, so two things. One is we need another swim lane so that we can see where this token is created, right? And the other thing is, let's name the let's name the fields so that they're very suggestive, right? Yeah, so maybe just called um, uh, what is a CB uh, CPT credential, CBT URL yeah. credential, or add yeah. a add some explanation, right? Even if you want to call yeah, it for example, I would suggest CS the CBT session URL and CBT session token, right? That would be so much easier to understand. It'll be very clear. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure, like uh, you. Would, um, I mean, yeah. Again, right? Not um, just <laughs> like asking questions, not disagreeing, mm -hmm. not rejecting. Um, so yeah, no, no, please, please, I don't, don't know, like please, uh, please. you know, what additional information, what additional session information that will attach the, will, will, will provide additional identity uniqueness. So I think this is the, uh, this is like so, the information. Maybe you need to access the, the the storage system right. or or maybe not right this is the for the for the url for the cbt url right. um, so like could be, be, at its, yeah in my opinion uh, at its at its minimum it is information for that yellow box below right uh for the client to communicate to find the endpoint that's what the you know the, the url is about and for the service at the other end of the endpoint to understand the context in which the client is operating. Okay. So now the, so what the, is this context though? The context is this request, right? The request here is volume snapshot delta. So what makes this request unique? So you talk about unique. It doesn't user. have to be it's unique. Really just it so, so, hold on, hold on. It doesn't have to be unique. It's this request. So the client made a post, right? And got a response. Then it takes that response and makes a gRPC call. So it, essentially, the 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 it's a session, 
for that thing. It doesn't have to be unique in any sense. There can be five sessions on the same two pairs of snapshots. Who cares, right? So, but the point is, it's this client, it's this request, and something is going to handle this request. So that's so what was session tokens. So, so it's like your CSR driver now actually needs to provide some uh, some service which can you know yes. give you this uh, CBT data, right? CBT. That's right. That is right. And then and that's not that's to not contact, our side to connect that's to that service, account. you need to have some credentials, which is the session token. That's right. And then that can be. Well, maybe it's a Kubernetes secret, or it could be some other format. It could be anything. Um, whatever the CSHR people, want to do. Exactly. We leave it to the implementer to do. Okay. So, so at this, again, right? Like I feel like it's not providing anything additional to the token, to the service account token. So, like, so, we, so we talk about, okay, so the, the request doesn't have to be unique. That's what we, we just said, um, said. So you just like some sort of thing that says, this is a request from, client A, and this is another request from client B. And client A is asking for the, the CBT between snapshot one and snapshot two. Yeah. And client B is asking for the same thing, snapshot one and snapshot two. Yeah. The only difference is client A and client B, which is really just a service account tokens, which again, yeah, just points down to what token review is doing. Right, but all that is taken care of at the first phase, right? Authentication and authorization is happening in the first, in the first Kubernetes call. So, you know, uh, uh, let me make an analogy, Ivan. It's like op like uh, like open in the file descriptor, right? In, in POSIX. At that point, at the open call, right, it returns an FD, and then you do IO with the FD, right? Well, that open call is validating, authenticating you, and uh, you know, uh, based on for your credential, your, your user ID, et cetera, and the and the and the path right. you are opening. It, but it, it, once, yeah, once that is validated, it goes down to a lower level of the kernel where you get a where you get a file, whatever you file structure, etc. Sign stuffed into your user area and your process, and you get a file descriptor back from that. Correct, and then you work on that. And multiple right. processes can open the same file. Exactly, you do the SCR once, not twice. That's right. So it's a session. So the file descriptor doing... represents a session. So likewise but over you're here, this is a session token here, right? coming back. You have one token from. Kubernetes and another token from the provider. So essentially, I'm saying they are more or less, they're, they're likely the same thing. But the sessions are used in, okay, maybe we're talking cross purposes. In the green box above, this negotiation is done securely with Kubernetes API. In yeah, the yeah. yellow box below, this is done securely, but it's valid. It's done without mutual authentication and it's valid. And the, the authority is conveyed, right, via the to session token, which was securely established. Think of it that way. So the CSI driver already knows how to talk securely with their backend. Of course. I mean, the CSI driver implementation is not part of this picture, right? I mean, how it does it, it's up to the CSI driver. Right. So I'm saying like that, I feel like that diamond box is not necessary. Oh, because, no, no. So, so what the diamond box, really, he needs to add another swim lane. Okay. There's another swim, the create session token really comes from the CSI driver, okay? So there's, and that's done through the Unix socket. So yeah, this is the CSI driver component. So there, there is a call, there's a call made here. Oh, he, he doesn't need but a line. Re regardless, right? The CSI driver just passed along the, to the backend and said, hey, give me a session. Okay. Uh, right? Is oh, I guess maybe uh, even uh, even your question is that why can't the CSI driver directly just return those things? To, so no, I, guess, yeah, call, right. Right. Yeah, I guess regardless, name? regardless of how this, I mean, like, would would the CSI driver try to do the session management, or would it tap into its um, own like backend session thing? Like, you use AWS as an example. The CSI driver has to do it. Right, but would it like um um. Okay, so forget about how the CSI driver does it, regardless yeah. whether CSI driver generate the token or CSI driver call AWS SDS and say, hey, give me a temporary token. I, I mean, as Shin said, you know, the CSI driver could op create a secret and just in, in its own name, in its own namespace, which is secure, right? And give the name of the secret to as the token. And then when the call comes in, right, to the gRPC service, the gRPC service looks up the secret and gets all the context. So, so yeah, so. so 
So whatever. Sure. So it doesn't sure, matter. It's simple. Sure, it's simple. It's a CSI driver. So let's assume the CSI driver managed the entire life cycle. The CSI mm -hmm. driver has a state of the session. Correct. If it crash and restart, you still remember whether the token is good or not. Somehow right. that, that goal magic magically taken care of. Right. Um I I would like to know, okay, maybe like uh, if you want to extend this diagram a little bit, I wanna know like um what country what makes the session? Like what makes the session a session? So client A say I want CBT for snapshot. A and snapshot B, and then client uh -huh. B say I want the same thing. CBT okay. For snapshot so a don't snapshot bring, don't bring so, in. Let's let's stick with one request. So the session is tied to well, this. Well, no, there have to be multiple requests, right? If it is one of request, of course, of course. But let's let's handle let's handle the problem this way. So there's a post call. You said what is the session? Correct. The session mm -hmm. is returning the result of this post call. The post call returns an immediate result, but you haven't got the data yet, right? You haven't got the changed block metadata. So. The session is all about retrieving that change, the change block metadata. And then it's when you finish with it, you're done. It could have a time to live, whatever you want as an implementer, you put that in, right? Sure. And that's and that's what it is. I mean, it's- So, it's, so why can't we just stop it after the Kubernetes API server said, okay, I can trust this um, request? Why can't we, I missed the question. So, so why can't we just stop after we call the token review and the subject access review APIs. What does that, that doesn't return you the data which you're asking for, right? You're asking for the so, snapshot so, delta change blocks. So I so think- the, that, that comes in second, that, that comes in your yellow box, right? That is correct. So I'm, talk, so I'm talking about only the green box. I'm saying like, um, let's, I'm just saying, like, um, why I, I still don't know why, like, uh, the diamond box is necessary when you already oh, the the, kill the diamond the box. Server. Okay, how okay, really, we have to the diamond box is very misleading. We need a swim lane. Prasad, cut and paste that vertical line and put it so, under that. So, Yvonne, mm -hmm. I think, uh, your question seems to be like you, you think, why can't we get that in just one call, the first call? Okay. But I think the, the problem is if we do that, then it's going to go through the API server again, right? That's what yes. we're trying to avoid. Yeah. Well, we are going through the API server. But, for, yeah, but the API the first, server so, is not getting the data back, right? So we are only saying, hey, uh, we're good. We, we, right. we get back the token. Right. And I'm not talking about the CBT data. I'm talking about the authentication Where? part. You're talking about the authentication part? Yeah, I'm talking about only the green box. Yeah, yeah. That's, so that, that, that box should be on the swim lane. Uh, again, I, I don't know how Prasad draws swim lanes, but again, whatever. Uh, the, the thing is that yeah, more of a flow chart. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the action taken on, on that call, right? That authentication auth Z client, that that actually is the target of the left of the left swim lane. Then that makes a call to another uh, Prasad, we can work on the figure later on. But now we have a, we yeah. have this is the correct part set of actors involved, right? The CSI driver actor was missing from this chart before. So now you can see that the CSI driver actor creates a session token and returns it back. And this is done, if you look at the on the look at the other figure on the deployment side, this is done through the Unix socket, Unix domain socket, right? This this mm -hmm. sidecar calls this driver, the driver returns this data. So, Makes sense? So that still hasn't answered my question why like um okay so go back to your the your chart. Yeah. So if you go to your yellow box, yes, so scroll down a little bit. So right here, right? Um, so okay, so like oh. um, so right here, um, so why? So first so of all, this is wrong. The figure is wrong here. The, these calls are made now not to the not to the sidecar, but actually to this service. So you have to extend the yellow box to the right and talk to the second actor. It's the calls are made not to the CI sidecar. The calls are made to the CSI driver piece, which is listening. So, so regardless, um, who it calls, so there's some endpoint out there. Um, right. um same process or not, regardless of um, right. or go routines or whatever. Right. Um, I guess I'm still trying to understand. Like, um, so you say it's your gRPC call with session token list change blocks. So why cannot we as the part of the gRPC call? we submit the service account token and then we ask Kubernetes API server 
is this or can this be authenticated and authorized? If Kubernetes API server say yes, and then we just call like uh, we just so, fetch the CBT. I I hear you. Let's say there were let's say there were a thousand calls made, right? Or mm -hmm. every call would have to be authenticated in that way. Remember, this is now a data transfer API. This is not a a control API. So, so the whole the whole point expressed in the previous meetings was about how we overload the API service. Even authentication requests overload services. And the other part is the other part which Prasad I think had researched. Again, I'm not a I'm not an expert in, in security, so we really have to get this through security. Is that it's very hard to uh, authenticate to actually expose an API which is trust signed by the uh, what did you say, Prasad? By the by the certificate authority of the so customer. so forget about um certificate signing. So forget okay. So the server would always have a certificate. Yes. Right. The client side. So, so let's say the client side doesn't have a certificate. So we don't want to do MTLS, but Correct. at least the communication would be over secure GRPC. At least it's encrypted. Correct. So like regardless of thousands of requests, the 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 the, the green box will still need to happen, right? So and yes. the first part of the yes. green box is you still have to ask Kubernetes API server. You should scroll up a little bit, um, Prasad. Scroll up. Can you scroll up? Like that that first gray box. Token review and subject access review. Whether it is 50 requests, a thousand or million requests, that first gray box will always happen. You still have to ask Kubernetes APS. Yes, you exactly. will still ask Kubernetes APS. So it doesn't, it will still put load and pressure on the Kubernetes APS yes, server. But that's one, but at one least protocol. on authentication and authorization. So that's one, right. protocol, yeah. So, so what I'm saying is if you scroll down to the yellow box, um, um, like um, when you make a, a thousand gRPC calls, each one of them will still for, for go through the same mechanism and you will say, ask the Kubernetes API server, can I trust your service account token? Without going to that diamond box, right? Like the, 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 the diamond box means like, um, you know, we have to create 1000 of those volumes, snapshot delta, some custom resources there in the green box. But this is just one no, call. No, 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 no. Again, okay. So yeah, I, I don't, I don't get the. I, I think Prasad has to expound what this thing is. You understand what this volume snapshot delta object looks like, and I'm sure Prasad has a different figure for it, a different definition of it. Maybe we should call it a session token response or something. I don't yeah, know what. Yeah, it is. call it. CBT I think that's what is that is what call it CB token. Yes, yes. I think that is that is the. That is your confusion, right? It is no, not no. That's object. not my confusion. My my I, my I, okay. So, I still don't know why like um, the session token is needed. So it's this communication will be open, right? I mean, so if you just uh, send a service support token along with the request and rely on service to validate the validate the client based on the service account token, the, the communication will be still open. It, it won't be um, a TLS communication, right? So the client has to trust the server and the server has to trust the client, agreed? So it can be done directly as in the case of the green box, right? It can be done with mutual authentication and authorization done through CSR, through the Kubernetes mechanisms. That's in the green box. And that be that's because the the client is coming in with say the whatever kubectl authority give granted to the client, right? It has all that type of stuff, and we the kube API server is the one which is trusted, and it then it then forwards the request to the ag API server, which responds, validates all the other stuff. Now we want to bypass the kube API server, but we still want to have mutual authentication accomplished at the end of that for all the data transfer. So what, what we what use is the delegation to... model. It's, we, are, we use encryption over the wire in this yellow box. You, it's a secure call coming in. The client can trust the fact that the endpoint came as a response from this trusted request. And the service receiving the request can trust that the token right, was issued by it. Because the service cannot, at this point, the service in the yellow box cannot identify the, the client and doesn't have to actually. It just trusts the fact that the token conveys all the all the authentication granted in the green section. You, you get my you get the delegation part. I, I get it. I just don't agree with it. <laughs> oh no no, no sure. Do, 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 I, that, part's okay. that part's okay. 
Because I feel like we I are. Think that's a very fair. That's a very fair disagreement, and we need to put it through people who are better in security. Okay, this is a proposal, so we can. Yeah, rip it but I think let's get let's get the proposal. Yeah, let's get the components correct. Okay, in the figures, so we don't so we don't get sidetracked, and then we can totally rip the security model apart. I have no problem with that. Yeah, sorry, sorry, I'm just thinking. Um, yeah. Um. Okay. Um. Yeah. I. I um. Shing, do you have any uh, other thoughts? Yeah. This. I'm not quite sure if uh, this model. Uh, is good from the security point of view. I guess this is definitely something that we need to ask them. This is a, I agree. I this agree is with not, that. This is not something that we have used before, right? Uh, so it's basically now you get the token. Now uh, you just uh, trust this, right? The the and then the backup uh, software will be using this token, uh, right? Yeah. So that's the part I'm not so, quite sure if how secure is this this way. So like you 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 do the secure basically the the first one first time you call. That's the, the normal path, normal Kubernetes path. You got the authentication, everything, and then you just trust that whatever you got, right? And uh, after that, you do not have to go through that I mean, again. It, mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, in some sense, it's not unlike any web token, right? I mean, mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. I think the uh, you, you see, like, yeah, we 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 scare like I'm fung away. <laughs> it was like, this is why I don't show up to this kind mm -hmm. of meeting. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, he's well, actually, it's, it's very nice that only so few of us in this meeting so we can shake this out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think like um anyways, I finally tell me that he wants to continue to um work with us on this, but just subject it to his own um other full-time job and stuff like that. But anyways, regardless, I think fundamentally, right? I think uh the the main uh disagreement um is that like um so so I think Carl, you you put it nicely by saying that okay, so the 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 client trusts the server via the, the TLS certificate. I think we cannot get away with that one, right? You, you, we just cannot. We cannot. Yeah, but now how does the the, 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 the the other part of the equation is how does the server trust the client? So in this in this um, proposal, like we are saying that the client, the, the server will trust the client because the client has a, a token that the, the server issue. That's right. Okay, so which, which I think like from that, if yeah. we talk, if we use like that flow, I think that easy, even that 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 language that 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 makes sense. Yes, I guess like yeah, the, the main difference of disagreement is like yeah, I guess like what I'm saying is like yeah, the server will trust the client because the client present a service account token that the Kubernetes API server says it can be trusted. I th I think okay, we don't have to agree. Um, we don't. We can agree to disagree with that. But I think do we agree that that's the fundamental like disagreement there? Yeah. Like, you, I mean, you, the... Yeah. You, you folks want a stronger authentication and authorization. So I I'm only gonna trust you if you give me a token that I issue, versus like um I guess like my 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 way of um, my my language is like, it's a bit. Looser I think than the, the things that is kind of out of our control is like how does driver implement this right? It's like completely up that's, to driver. Yeah, and by the way, I, I really think we can make it really strong if say every gRPC call can mutate the token and return the next token. You know, I mean, that's that's how, for example, web authentication works, right? The JWT is 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 mutated and returned back, I think every call, something like that, right? So essentially this is a session and if the session breaks, there's no retrying, you go start a new session. But then, yeah, that, but do we need to, you know, uh, design some, some pattern for this one like how you're, you're saying it's a completely up to the driver i guess that's the part i'm not quite sure yes. if it's up to the driver then they could you know it could have something that is actually not really secure so, right? so that's me, the part i'm not sure how we can guarantee that sure. yeah sure let me spin out an example how mm -hmm. i would do it just just a very simple example because you know i prefer to implement simply so if i'm the csi driver i would say construct and create the, uh, a token. I would spin off a pod potentially with to run this service. It gives you isolation. It gives you, you know, rate limiting, everything on that thing. And I'd give it all the secret information and spin it off and forget. So my my CSI driver now goes back to doing its own stuff, right? The, the client 
contacts that URL, which now points to that new service running in that pod, and it does its session. And when it's done, it closes off and the pod dies. If the, if the client doesn't call and say some time to live, the, the pod just says, bye-bye, it's dead, right? Mm -hmm. Something like that. I mean, that's, that's how I would implement it as a naive first pass approach. Right. I think this definitely, this design definitely, definitely makes it very simple on the client side. So the part where you talk about when the CSI driver comes up, it somehow have a secret or something that it, it passed along the secret and then it went back to do his own thing. So that is the part that I'm not sure okay. what is Okay. So let like. me take a concrete example. I've worked a lot with VMware, as you guys know, right? So, and right now, I, the way I, we talk to VMware, we spin off a pod, to, to, you know, because it has C Google bindings, et cetera. We, we spin off a pod with all that stuff. And it mm -hmm. we give it all the arguments, which include, say, the, the volume, the FCD ID and the snapshot IDs, et cetera. And we tell it, go do its thing, correct? So I would consider doing it in a similar manner and spin off this pod, right? This will give it all the identity of whatever came in this box here. Like here, you know, here's the, here's the snapshot name. Here's the... Here's the you know volume name, sorry, FCD ID, the or whatever. It has to be in CSI in, in CSI object term. So volume name uh, uh, and snapshot content, et cetera, et cetera. All the data is then packaged and construct can turn, turned into the domain specific FCD ID and snapshot ID, et cetera, and given to this pod somehow through a secret or through command line arguments or whatever. You know, that's totally vendor specific. And the URL is given to it and the token is given to it, right? And then that guy then listens for until some time, you know, until it, uh, you know, until the time expires, et cetera, but it listens for the client. When the client call, contacts it, it knows what it's doing and it starts, you know, running the, whatever the VMware calls to, you know, op open the, the FCD and start getting allocated blocks and change blocks and all the other stuff. So how does this pod affect other pods running in the cluster? I guess that could be a question, you know. It's a pod. I, mean, I, I know, I know. But I mean, you have a, this a, resource constraint, thing. things like that, right? So, um, Shin, I don't know. Any piece of work involves some CPU uh, resource. I know, I know. I would just put a pod around thinking it. about potentially it. what other pe people would ask those kinds of questions. That's why I'm asking. Yeah. This I mean, you know, I'm doing the backup. The CPU cycle is allocated. Is, the CPU work is is targeted straight to my backup service, right? Mm -hmm. But if I'm yeah. using a, a Kubernetes service, it's like, okay, system acting on my behalf. That's all. But the work has to be done. So it's, so like yeah, and now you have been doing this one. So like even today, is that so that's what you're doing? You have like a pod just for this? Yes. Okay. We actually spin up a pod to do this. Mm. So mm. And it's actually okay. very fast, Shin. Well, you know, it, it, again, we're talking backup, right? So we're talking the, the, the milliseconds taken to spin off a pod is nothing compared to the seconds required. So what the about your, so so all your, like the data, the real, not just control paths, but even data is go, also going through yeah. this. So kind of case, this pod. Do, yeah, yeah. In our case, all the data is done in there. Here, here. And the you have like a, some dedicated network for this? We use the VDDK. How the net, how the data comes to the to the VDDK is so that's a, what do we suggest? Is a dedicated backup network? <laughs> yeah, I mean, no. So we, it's it's not. There's no dedicated data network in in, in this environment. But the Kubernetes spec doesn't. The CSI spec doesn't even talk about dedicated networks, right? Yeah, I no, I know. I'm just saying that yeah. people be <laughs> asking those questions. I mean, I wish. I really wish because that would help us in the TKGS case. But <laughs> you know. But anyway, whatever. But, but yeah. yeah, so that the end to end workflow works, right? Um, it just you know, I still um, I think why don't again be cognizant of time here. Um, you probably yeah, you probably could you know you also other than you're adding this CSI driver in here in the diagram, maybe also good if you talk about like how are you going to uh implement this or how they are going yeah. to deploy yeah, and can, those yeah, so details adding some details so people can absolutely understand. absolutely i think they, there are at least yeah. two implementation styles we can propose this is one style mm -hmm. i just said, spin up mm -hmm. a pod the other yeah. is that you know the csi thing just also handles all the volume requests together in one thing it doesn't care you know so the url i mean look at the variance variations we have this return grpc endpoint it could be dynamically created per session it could be one common thing for all sessions, right? I mean, there's so much variation here. I don't have enough network background to actually propose what's right or wrong. Mm -hmm. But the point is, it doesn't matter. The spec says, here's an address. 
yeah, I think like the, the, I think the, you probably need to give the, some uh, you know some recommendations, right? Yes, and yes that's yeah. true. I think um, from yeah, again from my perspective, I think the uh the the the, the GRPC call the GRPC um definition, I think those are all good. Um, my only thing is like the in the, the authentication and authorization part, mm -hmm. uh, whether we need an extra session token from the provider. Or can we just trust the um community service account token? I think that's yeah. that's my main thing. Otherwise, yeah. like you know, this looks perfect. This looks great. Um, yeah. that's the main part for me. So it's like, yeah, I guess my concern is from like a security and like um, um the, the token hey. management perspective. Sorry, okay, I think so we need to I'm drop. running out yeah. of time. I I need to join another meeting now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, me too. Yeah, okay. yeah. So yeah, so exactly. please update this. So we can come back and talk about this next time. Yeah. Okay. So we we should meet during the week and just figure this out. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Thank you. If, yeah, if you guys want me to be around, just um, ping me on Slack or whatever. Sure. Okay. Sure. Okay. Thanks, guys. Bye. Take care. Bye.